I'm looking up some uh, vegan soaps because um, I find liquid soap to be very wasteful. It's just mainly water. So I'm just switching over to bars. I'm sorry guys, I didn't mean to uh, actually show you that stuff. Um, where is the Patreon page? There you go. This is it. So just a quick uh, overview, tier one official patrons, two bucks per month. It's really there for that reason. It's pretty affordable um, and a way for you guys to support the stream. Uh, have a keep, um, keep it going and um, have your name listed in the credits. Uh, I'm going to start doing credits at the end of the stream and uh, I'm going to have that there as a thank you for keeping the stream uh, alive. And well, ne next we got tier two all access patrons. Five bucks per month, you get early access to finished pages and exclusive content. Uh, tier three, we got the critique submissions tier. This is where it gets interesting. 15 bucks per month. You could also just do it once per month if you want to just submit once to get um, live critique. It's going to be held every Friday for two hours from eight until 10. I am going to be critiquing your work and showing you where you could improve. Uh, in your drawing and in your anatomy um, and just provide you guys some helpful tips as well you will also get promoted so whatever your um, social media platform is included with your submission of what you're working on and I will have that posted there as well to get viewers more interested in your profile and what you got cooking uh, next we got and that's gonna be held every Friday next we got the Kickstarter patron 25 bucks per month once um, you could do it once a month uh, or one-time submission and just cancel before the, uh, the new month comes around. But for 25 bucks per month, I will do a high resolution digital painting of you. Um, all of these are not requirements, you know, wearing masks or makeup, glasses, making fa uh, expressive faces, uh, hats and accessories. Those are not required, but I think it'll make an interesting profile photo for you once I'm finished um, doing a high resolution digital painting of you. Um, and it'll make the stream more interesting, I think, in general, for the viewers, for you, and for me. Um, you'll also get all the previous tier benefits, and just like all the other tiers as well, every tier gets the previous tier benefit. Now, the next one is tier four artist promotion. So if you're an intermediate or advanced artist and you want to get involved in a community, in our artist community, share your ideas, share your thoughts. Um, um, yeah, just be part of the Art Lounge Alley um, space. This is a great tier for that. There's some requirements on here. This is a pretty long, um, there's pretty long text in this one, so I highly encourage you guys to read through it at your own pace, at your own time. You could find this uh, Patreon page in the About section of the uh, Our Lounge Alley Twitch channel, uh, along with all the other social media platforms listed there. Next, we got Tier 5, Private Tutoring. Limited to 15 people, you guys will get four personal video lessons per month, so one video lesson per week of me showing you where you could improve on your drawing. And this is open to all skill levels. So whether you're a um, beginner all the way up to advanced, you guys can submit work there and I will be happy to uh, help you and guide you into improving your drawing. You also get a private Discord channel dedicated just to you. So each one of you, each 15 of you will have your own Discord channel between me and you. And that way you can leave me comments, questions and progress that you're currently making. And I'll talk to you about it more, um, either through the channel or the next video that I'm going to send you. Uh, so that pretty much does it, y'all. Take your time, read through it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me um, on stream or off.
So with that said, I am going to jump into where I left off last time. And I have been making some progress there. I feel um, that it's coming out decent. Little by little, um, there is some development in the drawing. And I kind of changed up, as you guys could see, I changed up like the color. And that's just to uh, break it up a little bit for me, I think. Um, just having that distinction kind of makes it easier to view. Okay, now I'm going to work on the background more. which I am planning to do more of today. Or... Question is, or is it better to... Um, whoops. To draw more characters, so that way I can... Um, I could see how much room I have left to work on the backgrounds because if I spend a lot of time drawing out all this stuff and then I draw a character in front of it, kind of wasteful. Um, so I'm thinking maybe one here. Maybe another one. Here. Yeah, I definitely want to have one here in the background somewhere. And then maybe another one here. Somewhere. And I, I think that will be pretty much it. Maybe one here, like a big head here. To suggest that there is one even further. Or closer, rather. But I don't know about that one. Well, you guys can't even see um, my mouse pointer. I forgot about that. But I was thinking like one here, one here, and another one there. To just kind of fill up the page more. To make it look like a crowded area. And then, um, and then from there, I'm going to start working on the backgrounds more. So that's pretty much going to be the goal, to add these characters. I'm going to try to add them tonight. And then, um, and then take things in the background. And uh, maybe work on like the very, very background. Define the cityscape.
gonna add a new layer. Because why not? Oh, for some reason it got darker. I'm going to do one that's three-quarter view, just to break things up a bit. Wow, man. These are very huge brushes that I made for some reason. challenge here is to um, to make sure that he is um, pers right in perspective because it can't be small uh, smaller than him if he's going to be closer towards the figures can't be smaller than this guy in the background He is further down, further away. He would either have to have to be about his size or smaller, even slightly bigger than this guy in the background. This guy right here. If he's like walking towards the camera at a three-quarter angle.
it can't be on the same, like his foot can't be on the same line as the robot's foot. You would have to be like here. Because if he is, his foot is on the same line as the robot's foot, then it would mean either the robot is really tall, or this guy is very short. say the horizontal point is here, so. Yeah, first, all right, so in order to establish the depth of a character, you have to first um, draw the foot line, like where the foot ends. And then using this character, I could, I could figure out how far of a distance um, the other characters are from him. That is something that I'm going to be going over um, in Drawing Basics at some point just perspective and um, establishing um, distance between objects in perspective. But that's just like the general idea. You have the uh, horizon line. So in this instance, it would be this line right here. Going across. and all the points uh, connect to it. So for instance, like the points for the roof in perspective would have to lead down to here, to this horizon line. Once you pick a vanishing point, so you, if you pick a vanishing point that's out in a distance, you want things to be kind of, um, the camera angle to be kind of from the side, you would have to be at the distance. You could pick a vanishing point from the center and just draw things out that way.
right? So like, let's say I wanted this to be the angle. hard for you guys to notice it but I'm going to change the color just to point it out even more So as you can see, like the side of um, the side of the awning has really narrowed down from that vanishing point. So like this is the uh, underneath part of the awning. I'm just going to erase this line to show for it. So now once I complete this, I'm going to draw another line here. I'm going to create this shadow here. Another line going across. This is just a quick demonstration. I'm not trying to be too accurate, but just to show um, how the vanishing point really changes the the uh, image. And there could be multiple vanishing points on a horizon line. So this is your horizon line right here. There could be one here. There could be one here. Like once you start, once you draw the box that you're working on, like, okay, I want the box to be here. And you establish the horizon line is like here, uh, not the, the vanishing point is there. And you don't want to show too much of that building, so you draw another line right here. Well, this looks more um, confusing, kind of working it out myself as well for this image, but it, it's a lot easier when, uh, when showing or demonstrating on a, a blank page. So I'm not going to get way too much into that right now. I'm just going to keep going with the original plan, <laughs> which is to uh, to draw out uh, the characters first.
uh, I just drew out um, the box to determine like the uh, the relation, the space relationship between the figures. So I gotta draw the character within this box here to make sure that uh, they're proportionate to each other. that perspective he's a little too far away so I'm gonna change change the distance to something a little bit closer And this is why it helps to start a new layer. Because if you make mistakes in your race, you're not racing everything else in the background as well, like all the other characters that I worked on. Decisions, decisions. It doesn't look bad, but maybe I wanted him to be a little bit closer. Maybe more in the foreground, in the background.
I like having to mix it up. You know, you have this big guy right here, right in the foreground. You got this other guy, this disgruntled guy. It's a little bit further away from the foreground. You got this this woman on the side here. And they're all kind of um, at different range from each other, different distance. So I'm trying to mix it up as much as possible. And then got those characters in the background. I got Locke picking the door. On a different note, I did receive um, the India inks that I ordered, but um, I'm not really happy with it. I think um, I think I'm going to get the ones with. Um, I guess they come with little like squeeze tubes, where you get like droplets, where you can, like pick up the colors and squeeze them into a palette. Whereas the ones that I got, you kind of have to like pour them out from a wide brim. And I don't think that's going to go well. <laughs> I'm trying to like, I'm not going to try to like cover up the entire palette with colors. So droplet is a very important um, part of it. So I'm going to have to return them, which means you guys are going to have to wait a little bit longer for that watercolor and um, watercolor and India ink comparison stream.
Stein.
All right, ladies and gents, um, I am going to cut the stream here for tonight. I will be back tomorrow for the same session um, starting at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, where I will be doing a drawing basics and then followed by uh, the project stream at 9 p.m. Um, if you guys enjoy the content, hit the subscribe button and the like button. They both will help the stream grow. And um, I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>